So, for anyone who knows anything about the current development of strategic command in the world, if, God forbid, there were a war directly involving the forces of Western nations within the next 10 years, that is a proper war, against a nation uh, or collection of nations with modernized military forces, the likelihood is that the highest firepower, most commonly and easily used strategic weapons, aren't going to be uh, adapted rockets from helicopters. They're not going to be mass strikes from bombers. They're not going to be uh, commonplace utilization of stealth bombers, uh, but rather innovation in the munitions delivery itself. And likely it's probably going to lead to nations buying more of these platforms and more advanced platforms within the next one to six years. Now you're probably on the edge of your seat right now, wondering what kind of wonderful system it's going to be, but frankly, the strategic system isn't an invisible plane or an orbital strike vehicle or my brother playing chess, but rather something brilliantly mundane. And that is the use of cruise missiles, which are launched via palletized deployment systems from a cargo plane. Now this all starts with the well-known JASSM, the Joint uh, Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, the thing which the LRASM is based on. Now, as its name suggests, it is a standoff missile, meaning it's a cruise missile. Uh, it can strike the enemy at more than 100 meters away, uh, 100 kilometers away even. Uh, and the JASSM is a brilliant missile in itself, costing around, uh, around a million pounds, I think around 1 million 36 pounds, and it utilizes a 450 kilogram WDU-42 penetrator warhead, which has become pretty famous for its potency, as well as a turbojet engine for longevity of cruise at subsonic speeds. Now, it has a range, a long range, of around 230 miles, but the uh, JASSM-ER, the extended range variant of the, of the JASM, has a range of 575 miles, and the JASSM-XR, uh, the extra range variant, can travel more than 1,200 miles, which is an incredibly long way. That's insane range. And the reason why this system is going to be the building block for the next generation of strategic weapons, and the reason why it's been developed so much, the JASSM uses GPS and INS, as you'd expect in the mid-course, as most cruise missiles do, uh, in the cruise, that is, and then infrared homing, as well as ATR, which is uh, automatic target recognition. Basically, it knows what it's supposed to hit. It can confirm with the TV camera uh, that the thing that it's going towards is, in fact, target. Now, of course, this is being utilized as the building block for the LRASM, the LRASM, uh, and it's particularly, and I guess you'd say partially, why the LRASM is such an important missile alongside with the JASSM. If we were to get to the point where we could utilize palletized deployment systems, well then strategic strike just got far more effective, far simpler, and really at a far larger potential scale during this conflict, which could be uh, pretty devastating. Now currently the JASSM can be equipped on the B1, the B2, the B52, as you'd expect, as well as the F-15, the F-16, and the F-18. And uh, that's where the joint comes in, bombers and strike fighters. But it's also undergoing a program to be equipped on the F-35. But back to our concept, the thing that I'm going to talk about today. The JASSM can also be deployed via palletized deployment systems. And the system is reasonably simple, and that's why it is going to be so effective. There is, in a cargo plane, a pallet. You know, the sort that you would see dropping off water, fuel, uh... UN aid uh, packages. And it, this pallet has uh, nine separated JASSM ERs loaded onto a C 17 cargo planes. Now, this pallet can contain nine munitions, but there are five total of these pallets, meaning 45 total munitions. Or alternatively, you could do the same on the C 130, which can accommodate uh, a total of 12 JASSMs. And these cargo planes can perform an airdrop, as they would usually do with these cruise missiles, which have pre-programmed targets. As the airdrop is completed, all pallets drop, as you'd expect, allowing the plane to go on its merry way back to base. Or if it's the C-17, and let's say it's carrying only three pallets uh, of JASSMs, then it can go on and deliver two resupply pallets. It can get on with its job, that's the point. 
once it's dropped uh, the munitions, it can get on with its job. After this, the parachute will of course deploy, and the missiles will release. The engine of the missile will, will ignite, the missile will pull up, level its wings, reclimb within about 30 seconds, and then go to the strike target via its ex sort of expected strategic strike performance, uh, and pre-programmed cruise, uh, I guess you'd say, utilizing waypoint system, it's, it's cruise navigation. Now, this would be particularly important if you're fighting an enemy which has well-developed radar systems, which has strategic targets that are far inland, or potentially, if the LRISM becomes able to do this, certain strategic naval targets, potentially islands. I wonder who that could be pertinent to. Now, in any case, uh, this is being done in the US under the program name Rapid Dragon. And let me clarify, because someone actually asked me this when I was talking to them about this, no, it is not called Rapid Dragon, because the parachute is rapidly dragging the pa uh, pallet out of the rear of the cargo plane. It's named after the Chinese uh, siege weapon, the ancient Chinese siege weapon, which was sort of a multi-ballista. It's allowed for the launching of 12 arrows at once by pulling a single trigger, much like uh, this program allows for the multi-launch of a lot of cruise missiles. Now, this has really huge strategic value. It means you can strike high-value targets inland with huge range without risking heading into enemy radar. It also allows for mass deployment of weapon systems, meaning high-value strategic targets can be destroyed in one fell swoop simultaneously with a cargo plane, which is incredibly common, which is already easy to utilize. And effectively, the mu you know, it doesn't have to be adapted in any way, it doesn't have to be, spe be specialized, it doesn't even have to be particularly tactical, because it never enters the actual radar uh, limit. It is never under any threat. It's just deploying cruise missiles en masse. Now, some are speculating, as was in the thumbnail uh, of this video, that the expansion of this could lead to even further mass development of missiles and mass deployment of missiles in huge quantities in order to carry out these simultaneous strikes on the enemy, which of course is going to be really overwhelming. But these missiles are going to be reasonably stealthy, able to avoid certain detection threats as you will have seen in the JASSM and the LRASM videos. Now, it's effectively a stealth saturation range at attack, uh, which is particularly uh, pertinent for naval targets. But what I'd also say is that this doesn't just implement these large penetrative cruise missiles. This can also uh, be used for strategic strike. The number of Spear 3s you could potentially pack into a pallet is huge. You could pack a load of them. Uh, and obviously that means you don't have to use the pod system, which would perhaps be used on more stealthy aircraft. And you can avoid uh, certain detection threats. And it's, it's stealth saturation attack at range, which is why it's so, so potent, really. Now, if pallet technology is upgraded to the point where these munitions can deploy in a huge bulk, that is to say it's not just nine being deployed, but you deploy something as seen in the thumbnail, um, a large almost a uh, storage vehicle which can hold, you know, potentially even hundreds, perhaps not that many, but, uh, you know, let's say a hundred cruise missiles, uh, it can deploy all of these munitions in huge bulk. And with the ease of target programming, the cargo planes become hugely important as an asset because they can hold so many munitions and it becomes far more useful in an attacking role. And it also means that there's less risk for uh, strike fighters, which would otherwise have to enter the airspace. Now, it would be a game changer to release these huge salvos en masse from cargo aircraft, and it, was, it would pretty much transform the face of uh, air surface warfare. So what's my point at the end of the day? Well, first off, these are going to play a major, major role in the next however many years of warfare. Additionally, it turns cargo planes into a far more useful, far more versatile, given that they can uh, now resupply, given that they can now, uh, I guess, drop specific units, as in drop people in. Uh, you know, they can drop uh, paratroopers in. But beyond this, it turns them into vehicles that can deploy munitions, which means that they are far more versatile in their role. And likely, this means that they will be far more on-demand assets uh, that governments will look to be acquiring or even adapting for this capability specifically. And one could even say that cargo planes are finally getting the limelight. 
but it's always worth remembering that they really are the backbone of a lot of operations. But all in all, the point I'm trying to make here is that cargo planes are something that's going to be far more in demand, and they are going to be far more useful in the future. And the thing that's going to be developed rather than uh, perhaps uh, air-based strike fighter technology, which is of course important and necessary, uh, but for on mass strike, the thing that's going to be developed are the cruise missiles themselves because the deployment system is so simple. And that obviously is far less expensive for governments. So, at the end of the day, people don't do too well without ammunition, water, fuel, and food, and cargo planes can do that. But now they can also deploy munitions, as well as paratroopers, which is probably even more terrifying. But all in all, much like the cannon, do appreciate the cargo plane.